everyone, my name's Annette and welcome back to Cotto Verdi. Today I'm going to be sewing violas and pansies and I'm really excited about this because I haven't actually sewn them before but by all accounts they're very easy to sew and I'm going to bring you along with me, show you how I do it and I'm going to talk you through the varieties that I've chosen and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the violas and pansies because they're actually quite interesting. You're probably wondering what the difference is between violas and pansies and people seem to use the names interchangeably but actually there are a couple of differences. So the first one is that all pansies are violas but not all violas are pansies and that is because pansies are, are derived from violas. Um, the other thing about pansies is that they tend to have larger blooms and but less of them whereas violas tend to have the smaller blooms but loads more of them and they're slightly more hardy so they'll go through winters better and they'll recover from a frost better but actually all violas and pansies are pretty hardy and they tend to flower uh, when you really need them in the spring so they like the cold weather and it's also a good idea to sow them when it cools down a little bit in maybe September or earlier on in the year because well that's certainly in our hemisphere that's when it's cooler um, because they germinate better um, if it's slightly cooler out so in the UK here, in centigrade, they'll germinate well between 15 and 18 degrees. So I think that's between sort of 60 or 59 and 65 degrees, something like that in Fahrenheit. The other way to tell the difference between pansies and violas is that pansies, whilst having larger blooms, also have four petals facing upwards and one petal facing downwards, whereas violas have two petals facing upwards and three petals facing downwards. So if you want to stand there and count your petals, you'll be able to tell whether you're looking at a viola or a pansy. The reason I'm really excited about sewing violas and pansies is firstly because of all the different colours that you can get now. And I really want all those colours in my garden, particularly, you know, amongst my tulips and daffodils. And my violas tend to go through the summer as well. So they'll be a really nice addition to my pots and, you know, around my flower beds, around the front of my flower beds. But the reason I'm most excited about it is because violas and pansies are edible and you have probably seen them you know in in fancy restaurants or restaurants that are trying to be fancy where they sprinkle them on salads and you know decorate plates with them and that is because they're edible and of course everyone knows about you know crystallized violets that you can put on cakes and things like that so you know we could um, do some of that later on in the year uh, but I'm really looking forward to being able to decorate some salads and some plates with it and I know it's very bougie and you know not everyone's cup of tea but it's the kind of thing I really like to do and I just like to bring that extra splash to um, to plates and maybe create a little bit of a wow factor so I'm very much looking forward to growing things that I can eat um, particularly because they're flowers and if you know anything about me then you'll know that I love flowers. So I'm going to sow my seeds today into the normal 40 cell seed trays that I have but you could equally you know sprinkle your seeds on the ground and then cover them up or you could you know sow them into just ordinary pots but I really like to use the seed trays because then I can keep an eye on what's germinating and what's not and it just saves me pricking them out um, that one extra time. The really important thing to know about sowing your viola and pansy seeds is that they like to germinate in the dark and so you do need to create a dark environment. Now you can do this by covering your pot or your seed tray with cardboard or a bit of wood or something like that but you have to check it every day because obviously once things start to germinate they need light in order to grow they need to photosynthesize so you have to be really rigorous about checking to see when your seeds are germinating what i'm going to do is i'm going to cover my um, seed trays with another seed tray this one doesn't have any holes in it so it's more like a gravel tray and I'm just going to place it on top of my seed tray like this and that will block out all the light and then as usual I'm going to be using the Melcourt Silver Grow Peat Free Compost that I always use if you've watched my other videos you'll know this but I'll link it uh, down below in case you're interested in having a look and buying it it's really important to buy peat free compost if you can at all I know it's more expensive but you know it will help preserve our peat bogs which are really important for our environment the other thing I'm going to be doing is bottom watering my seed trays which means once I've sown my seeds I'm going to put them in a larger tray that's full of water and let capillary action 
absorb, uh, help the compost absorb the moisture and um, that's the way I like to do it rather than um, mixing the water in first before I fill my seed tray. It's really important if you're sowing seeds and you want a really good success rate not to sow your seeds and then try and water with a watery can or a hose afterwards because it's going to really dislodge your seeds and they'll all end up in one pile if you've sown them in one tray or they'll just end up around the edges or something like that or they could get buried too deeply. So it's much better to either pre-moisten your compost or to bottom water after you've sown your seeds. I am going to cover my seeds with a tiny sprinkling of vermiculite because I find that it helps the seed tray and compost retain the moisture and it also really helps prevent algae growth so I like to do that. It's something that I've started doing recently and I found that it's really helping. What I'm going to do now is go through the different varieties that I'm going to be sowing and you know if I've got any information I'll explain a little bit about them and I'll tell you which ones um, I think are pansies and which are viola and I'm going to pop a picture up on the screen so that you can get an idea of what they look like. I've got 15 varieties that I'm sowing today. Obviously you don't need to sow 15 varieties, you could just sow one it's up to you how many you choose but I can't resist all the flowers I just want everything so I'm going to start with the pansies and the first one I'm saying today is called nature antique shades and it's an f1 hybrid which means um, it won't come true from seed you can't collect the seed for that one I'm also sowing sangria I'm very excited about this it looks you know looks like a sangria it looks lovely and colorful that's also an f1 I'm sowing cello neon purple I'm wondering how bright that's going to be but it looks fabulous in the picture and I'm sowing strawberry sundae. These are all pansies. The other one I'm sowing I ordered from a different website Thompson and Morgan and it's called Can Can Mix and I just really like the frilly edges and I was finding it quite hard to find frilly edged pansies um, but it's come and it's it's come it says it's a trial price 99p so um, I mean I didn't buy it because it was super cheap or anything but I'm just wondering is that a trial variety? I don't know but anyway super frilly looks really exciting so then we move on to the violas and these are viola cornuta and I guess that's a particular variety so this is a horned pansy and it's called Prince Henry and this these are all viola cornutas so I'm, the, I'm saying viola cornuta arkwright ruby another horn pansy and that one should be a wonderful red color and I'm really hoping that's going to be in flower for you know the festive season I'm sowing Viola Cornuta Johnny Jump Up and this is another horn pansy but I'm quite interested to see that it's called Johnny Jump Up because I know that some people call all uh, pansies and violas Johnny Jump Ups but this one is actually called Johnny Jump Up and then I'm also sowing Endurio Pink Shades can't wait to see those because they look like wonderful different shades so I'm sewing another one from Thompson and Morgan and this one is called Rose Shades. And I'm sewing another Viola with a really fun name and this one's called Viola X Wittrockiana and it's a Floral Days Morning Dew is what it's called and I just feel like that's a really long-winded name. And this one's a biennial so you do need to sew that one in the autumn to make sure that it flowers for the next season. And then the last four that I'm sowing are, I believe, all fragrant, and they are Viola odorata. So I'm sowing Viola odorata, the true wild form, which is going to be a gorgeous shade of violet. Hopefully, it's um, obviously the typical English violet. I'm sowing Viola odorata sulfurea, and this one's a lovely sort of soft apricoty colour. And I'm sowing Viola odorata odorata alba. Um, and this is going to be a white version. I think it's very similar to the true wild form, but just a white version. And I'm sewing Viola Odorata Rain de Neige, which means Queen of Snow. And this one um, is kind of white and tinged with pale blue. So don't forget to label your seed trays so that you don't get confused and forget later on what you sowed. So pansy seeds are really easy to handle. So it should be quite simple just to put one seed into each cell.
Now that I've sown all my seeds, I'm going to bottom water the seed trays by placing them into another tray full of water and I'm going to leave them there until all the compost is wet and um, has absorbed the water through capillary action. Once this is done, I'm going to cover these seed trays with an upturned seed tray that doesn't have any holes in it. Um, you can use anything, as I said earlier, uh, but that's what I'm choosing to use and then I'm going to place them in my cold frames. You could just leave them outside if you want, they don't have to be in a cold frame. I just find the cold frame is a secure spot where the cats are unlikely to knock the cover off. Um, and I, yeah, I don't really want them bouncing all over my seeds, so that's why I choose to use the cold frames. But uh, you can just leave them outside so long as they're not going to get drenched. It's really, really important once you've cut, once you've sown your seeds and placed a cover over them that you do check them every day. I mean, probably not in the first week because they're going to take seven to fourteen days to germinate. But um, uh, uh, towards the end of the week, I would definitely check to see whether they're germinating because if they're germinating you need to take that dark cover off so that they get the light. Um, I think I said this earlier in the video but I just wanted to emphasize it. Anyway I am definitely going to keep you updated on my viola and pansy seedlings and I will be posting information about them on my Instagram account so do follow me there if you use Instagram and you're interested in seeing what I'm up to on there but I will post updates here on YouTube to let you know you know when I'm potting them on and when I'm planting them out and you know how successful they were and how they did so uh, do subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along with updates I really hope that you found this interesting and useful and it's a fun project to be doing you know now towards the end of August beginning of September as the weather cools down thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time um, I am going to cover my seeds with a tiny sprinkling of a bit vermiculite. Vermiculite. I am going to... <laughs> so you don't need to do all 15 or all 300. I don't know how many different varieties there are. And why am I just rabbiting on... Why, why am I rabbiting on... I 